Hello everyone, I'm Luigi Dariba and today I'm gonna discuss to you the stages of psychosocial development under the post freudian theory of Eric Erikson. These are the topics or the stages under the psychosocial development that we're going to tackle, including their psychosexual mode, the crisis or the conflict and the strength during these stages. First stage is the infancy. Second is the early childhood. Third is the play age. Fourth is the school age. Fifth is the adolescence. Sixth is the young adulthood. Seven is adulthood. And eighth and the last stage is the old age. First, let us define first what is psychosocial development. Psychosocial development is the development of the personality including the acquisition of social attitudes and skills from infancy through maturity. So basically speaking, psychosocial development is the evolution of your personality and social attitudes and skills from the day you were born and up until the day you die. Basic points of psychosocial development that requires an understanding by Eric Erikson. First, growth takes place according to the epigenetic principle. Second, in every stage of life, there is interaction of opposites. Third, at each stage, the conflict between the dystonic and syntonic elements produces an ego quality or ego strength. Fourth, too little basic strength at any one stage result in a core pathology for that stage. Although Erickson referred to his eight stages as psychosocial stages, he never lost sight of the biological aspect of human development. Sixth, events in earlier stages do not cause later personality development. Seventh, and the last points of Erickson, during each stage, but especially from the adolescence forward, Personality development is characterized by an identity crisis. Later on on the report, we are gonna know what Erickson mean by these points. The first stage of psychosocial development is the infancy, a period encompassing approximately the first year of life. Develop motor skills such as the ability to walk and communication skill. So this stage is in line with the first stage of development of Freud which is the oral phase. But it adopts a broader focus than Freud's oral stage which was concerned all exclusively with the mouth. Diba ang kang Freud kaya nag-focus lang sa mouth? Ang kang Erickson kaya nag-incorporate kung siya dili lang sa mouth. But to various sense of organs as well, which is explained panato sa psychosexual development sa infants. Oral sensory is the psychosexual mode of the infancy, a phase that includes infants' principal psychological mode of adapting, characterized by two modes of incorporation, receiving and accepting what is given. The first mode of incorporation is the receiving. Infants can receive even in the absence of other people. They can take in air through the lungs and receive sensory data without having to manipulate others. So ang infants kay nagareceive yapon siya ng mga sensory data without the need of the others. Example, makareceive siya ng hangin gamit ang lungs para makasurvive siya without sa tabang sa uban. The second mode of incorporation, however, implies a social context. Infants not only must get, but they also must get someone else to give. This early training in the interpersonal relation helps them to learn eventually become givers. This mode of incorporation kay naga implies na siya social context. 
dapat i-train na nimo ang infants na maghatag para ang grow niya dili na siya mahimong dalo in getting other people to give they learn to trust or mistrust other people thus setting up the basic psychosocial crisis of infancy namely the trust versus mistrust the psychosocial crisis or conflict during infancy trust versus mistrust infants most significant interpersonal relations are with their primary caregiver ordinarily their mother at this point in development the child is utterly dependent upon adult caregivers especially their mother for everything they need to survive including food love warmth safety and nurturing if our caregivers fails to provide adequate care and love the child will come to feel that they cannot trust or depend upon the adults in their life if a child successfully develop trust the child will feel safe and secure in the world caregivers who are inconsistent emotionally unable or rejected contribute to feelings of mistrust in the children under their care failure to develop trust will result in in fear and a belief that the world is inconsistent and unpredictable the strength during infancy hope hope emerges from the conflict between basic trust and basic mistrust without the antithetical relationship between trust and mistrust people cannot develop hope infants must experience hunger pain and discomfort as well as the alleviation of these unpleasant conditions by having both painful and pleasurable experiences infants learn to expect the future distresses will meet with satisfactory outcomes second stage of psychosocial development early childhood children develop a sense of control over their interpersonal environment as well as a measure of self control this stage is paralleling freud anal phase but once again mas broader siya compare kay freud kay, kay ang kang freud man children receive pleasure in destroying losing object while later they take satisfaction in defecating but for erickson young children receive pleasure not only from mastering the sphincter muscle but also from mastering other body functions such as urinating walking throwing holding and so on psychosexual mode anal urethral muscular children learn to control their body especially in relation to cleanliness and mobility this stage is more than a time of toilet training it is also a time of learning to walk run hug parents and hold on to toys and other object with each of these activities young children are likely to display some stubborn and tendencies early childhood is a time of contradiction a time of stubborn rebellion and meek compliance a time of impulsive self-expression and compulsive deviance a time of loving cooperation and hateful resistance this obstinate insistence on conflicting impulses triggers the major psychosocial crisis of childhood the autonomy versus shame and doubt autonomy versus shame and doubt perform basic action on their own and making simple decisions about what they prefer children likely to find culture that attempts to inhibit some of their self expression parents may shame their children for soiling their pants or making mess with their food they may also doubt by questioning their children ability to meet their standard shame is a feeling of self consciousness of being looked at and exposed doubt on the other hand is the feeling of not being certain the feeling that something remains hidden and cannot be seen both shame and doubt are dystonic qualities 
and both grow out on the basic mistrust that was established in the infancy. However, by allowing kids to make choices and gain control, parents and caregivers can help children develop a sense of autonomy. Strength of Early Childhood Stage Children develop well when their environment allows them some self-expression in their control of sphincters and other muscles. Children who successfully develop well in this stage may feel confident and secure. When experiences too much shame and doubt, children do not adequately develop the second important basic strength. Too little will and too much compulsivity carry forward will result lack purpose in the play age and lack of confidence in the school age. The third stage of the psychosocial development is the play stage. At this point in the psychosocial development, children begin to assert their power and control over the world through directing play and other social interaction. This period is covering the same time as Freud Pollock stage, but as always, there is a difference. In Pollock stage, Oedipus complex is the core development, but as for Erickson, the Oedipus complex is one of the major development on this stage. In addition to identifying with their parents, preschool age children are developing locomotion, language skills, curiosity, imagination, and ability to set goals. The psychosexual mode of play age, genital locomotor. Play age children have a genital activity is accompanied by their increasing facility at locomotion. Children on this stage now can move with ease running, jumping, and climbing with no conscious effort, and their play shows both initiative and imagination. Children's cognitive abilities enable them to manufacture elaborate fantasies that include audible fantasies, but also include imagining what it's like to grow up to be a omnipotent or to be a ferocious animal. These fantasies, however, also produce guilt and thus contribute to psychosocial crisis of the play age, namely initiative versus guilt. The psychosocial conflict of the play stage, initiative versus guilt. Children who are successful at this stage feel capable and able to lead others. Those who fail to acquire these skills are left with a sense of guilt, self-doubt, and lack of initiative. As children begin to move around more easily and vigorously, and as their genital interest awakens, they adopt an intrusive head-on mode on approaching the world. Although they begin to adopt initiative in their selection and pursuit of goals, many goals such as marrying their mother or father or leaving home must be either repressed or delayed. The consequences of this taboo and inhibited goals is guilt. The strength of the play stage Purpose. Children can now play with a purpose, competing at games in order to win or to be on top. Their genital interests have a direction, with mother or father being the object of their sexual interest. When an ideal balance of individual initiative and willingness to work with others is achieved, the ego quality known as purpose emerges. Children are developing a conscience and beginning to attach labels such as right and wrong to their behavior. This youthful conscience becomes the cornerstone of morality. The fourth stage of psychosocial development, the school age. The social world of children is expanding beyond family to include peers, teachers, and adult models. For school age children, their wish to know becomes strong and is tied to their basic striving for competence. In normal development, children strive industriously to read and write, to hunt and fish, or to learn the skills required by their culture. Psychosexual mode of school age, latency. As children work and play to acquire these essentials, they begin to form a picture of themselves 
as competent or incompetent. Erickson agreed with Freud that school age is the period of psychosexual latency. Sexual latency is important because it allows children to divert their energies to learning the technology of their culture and the strategies of their social interaction. The psychosexual crisis of school age. Children need to cope up with new social and academic demands. Success leads to a sense of competence while failure results in feeling of impurity. Children who are encouraged and commended by parents and teachers develop a feeling of competence and belief in their skills. Those who receive a little or no encouragement from parents and teachers or peers will doubt their abilities to be successful. The strength of school age, competence. The confidence to use one's physical and cognitive abilities to solve the problems that accompany school age. Competence lays the foundation for co-cooperative participation in productive adult life. The fifth stage of psychosocial development, adolescence. One of the most crucial developmental stages because by the end of this period, a person must gain a firm sense of ego identity. This stage plays an essential role in developing a sense of personal identity, which will continue to influence behavior and develop for the rest of a person's life. Psychosexual mode of adolescence, puberty, defined as a genital maturation plays a re relatively minor role in Erickson's concept of adolescence. Puberty is important psychologically because it triggers expectation of adult roles yet ahead, roles that are essentially social and can be filled only through a struggle to attain ego identity. The psychosocial conflict of adolescence. Identity versus confusion. Adolescents as young people strive to find out who they are and who they are not. With the advent of puberty, adolescents look for new roles to help them discover their sexual, ideological, and occupational identities. In this search, young people draw from the variety of earlier self-images that has been accepted or rejected. Those who receive proper encouragement and reinforcement through personal exploration will emerge from this stage with a strong sense of self and feeling of independence and control. Those who remain unsure of their belief and desires will feel insecure and confused about themselves and the future. The strength of adolescence, fidelity, after establishing their internal standards of conduct, adolescents are no longer in need of parental guidance but have confidence in their own religious, political, and social ideologies. Fidelity refers to all beliefs, ideas, and values that help shape and guide persons' behavior, which Erickson described as ability to live by society, standards, and expectations. The sixth stage of psychosocial development, young adulthood. This stage covers the period of early adulthood when people are exploring personal relationships. After achieving a sense of identity during adolescence, people must acquire the ability to fuse that identity with the identity of another person while maintaining their sense of individuality. Erickson believed that a strong sense of personal identity was important for developing intimate relationships. The psychosexual mode of young adulthood, genitality, can develop only during young adulthood when it is distinguished by mutual trust and stable sharing of sexual satisfaction with a love of person. It is the chief psychosexual accomplishment of young adulthood and exists only in an intimate relationship. The psychosocial conflict of young adulthood, intimacy versus isolation. Young adulthood need to form intimate 
loving relationship with other people. Success leads to strong relationships while failure results in loneliness and isolation. Intimacy is the ability to fuse one's identity with another person without the fear of losing it because intimacy can be achieved only after people have formed a stable ego. Isolation defined as the incapacity to take chances with one's identity by sharing true intimacy. Erickson believed it was vital that people develop close, committed relationships with other people. Those who are successful at this step will form relationships that are enduring and secure. The strength of young adulthood love mature devotion that overcomes basic differences between men and women mature love means commitment sexual passion cooperation competition and friendship is the basic strength of young adulthood enabling a person to cope productively with the final two stages of development the seventh stage of psychosocial development adulthood People begin to take their place in society and assume responsibility for whatever society produces. Mature adulthood demands more than procreating upstream. It includes caring for one's children as well as the other people's children. In addition, it encompasses working productively to transmit culture from one generation to the next. Adults need to create or nurture things that will outlast them often by having children or creating a positive change that benefits other people. The psychosexual mode of adulthood, procreativity, refers to more than genital contact with an intimate partner. It includes assuming responsibility for the care of offspring that result from that sexual contact. Procreation should follow from the mature intimacy and love established during the preceding stage. Obviously, people are physically capable of producing offspring before they are psychologically ready to care for the welfare of these children. The psychosocial conflict of adulthood, generativity versus stagnation. Generativity, the generation of new beings as well as new products and new ideas. As noted earlier, Intimacy calls for the ability to fuse one's ego to that of another person without the fear of losing it. This unity of ego identifies leads to a gradual expansion of interest. During adulthood, one-to-one -one intimacy is no longer enough. Other people, especially children, become part of one's concern. Instructing others in the ways of culture is a practice found in all societies. For the mature adulthood, this motivation is not merely an obligation or selfish need, but an evolutionary drive to make contribution to succeeding generation and to ensure the continuity of human as well. The antithesis of generativity is self-absorption and stagnation. The generation cycle of productivity and creativity is crumpled when people become too absorbed in themselves, too self-indulgent. Such an attitude fosters and a pervading sense of stagnation. Some elements of stagnation and self-absorption, however, are necessary. Creative people must at times remain in dormant stage and be absorbed with themselves in order to eventually generate new growth. The strength of adulthood, care. One must have hope, will, purpose, competence, fidelity, and love in order to take care of that which one cares for. Care is not a duty or obligation, but a natural desire emerging from the conflict between generativity and stagnation or self-absorption. If this strength handled successfully, being proud of your accomplishment, watching your son grow into adults, and developing a sense of unity with your partner are important accomplishments of this stage. The eighth and the last stage of psychosocial development, old age. People look back on a life they feel was well lived will feel satisfied and ready to face the end of their lives with a sense of peace. Old age doesn't mean people are no longer creative. Procreation in the narrow sense of producing children may be absent. Yet, old age can be remain productive and creative in the other ways. They can be a caring grandparents on their own grandchildren as well to other younger members of society. 
na psychosexual mode of old age. Generalized sensuality to take pleasure in a variety of different physical sensations, sights, sound, taste, odors, embraces, and perhaps genital stimulation. Generalized sensuality may also include a greater appreciation for the traditional lifestyle of the opposite sex. Men become more nurturant and more acceptant of the pleasure of non-sexual relationship, including those with their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Women become more interested and involved in politics, finance, and world affairs. The psychosocial conflict of old age, integrity versus despair. People look back on the events of their lives and determine if they are happy with the life that they live or they regret the things they did not or didn't do. Those who are unsuccessful during this stage will feel that their life has been wasted and many experience may regrets. The person will be left with feeling of bitterness and despair. The strength of old age, wisdom, draws from the contributes to the traditional knowledge passed from generation to generation. Erickson defined wisdom as unformed and detached concern with life itself in the face of death itself. People with detached concern do not lack of concern. Rather, they exhibit an active but dispassionate interest. With mature wisdom, they maintain their integrity in spite of declining physical and mental abilities. Erickson's Method of Investigation Erickson insisted that personality is a product of history, culture, and biology. And his diverse methods of investigation reflect this belief. He employed anthropological, historical, sociological, and clinical methods to learn about children, adolescents, mature adults, and elderly people. First method, anthropological studies. Early childhood training was consistent with a strong cultural value and that history and society helped shape personality. In 1937, Erickson made a field trip to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the South Dakota to investigate the causes of apathy among Sioux children. Erickson reported on early Sioux training in terms of his newly evolving theories of psychosexual and psychosocial development. He found that apathy was an expression of extreme dependency the Sioux had developed as a result of their reliance on various federal government programs. At one time, they had been courageous buffalo hunters, but by 1937, the Sioux had lost their group identity as hunters and were trying half-heartedly to scrape as a living farmers. Childhood practices, which in the past had trained young boys to be hunters and young girls to be uh, helpers and mothers of future hunters, were no longer appropriate for an agrarian society. As a consequence, the Sioux children of 1937 had great difficulty achieving a sense of ego identity, especially after they reached adolescence. Two years later, Erickson made a similar field trip to the Northern California to study people of the Yurok Nation who lived mostly on salmon hunting. Although Sioux and Euro had vastly divergent cultures, each tribe had tradition of training its youth in virtues of its society. Yurok people were trained to catch fish and therefore they possessed no strong national feeling and had a little taste of war. Obtaining and retaining proposition and proposition were highly valued among people of Europe nation. Erickson was able to show that early childhood training was consistent with this strong cultural value and that history and society helped shape personality. Second method, psychohistory is a controversial field that combines psychoanalytic concepts with historical methods. Erickson defined psychohistory as the study of individual and collective life with the combined methods of psychoanalysis and history. He used psychohistory to demonstrate his fundamental belief that each person is a product of his or her historical time and that those historical times are influenced by exceptional leaders experiencing a personal identity conflict. Freud originated psychohistory with an investigation of Leonardo da Vinci and later collaborated with American Ambassador William Bullitt to write a book-length psychological study of American President Woodrow Wilson. 
Although Erikson deplored this latter work, he took up the methods of psychohistory and refined them, especially in his study of Martin Luther and Mahatma Gandhi.